everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Doodling Through Education. For my CC students, this is Cycle 1, Week 12, Science. And for everyone else, that just means we're going to be talking about some plant systems today. So we'll be talking about photosynthesis, respiration, and transpiration. Before we do so, hop on over to doodlingthrougheducation.com. You can get your workbooks that um, correlate with these videos there. There's a link for that in the description. There are four worksheets per week per subject, and you can buy them by quarter too if you would like. Without further ado, let's start doodling. First up on the plant systems that we are going to talk about today is photosynthesis. Now, for the last several videos, I have mentioned photosynthesis and generally how it works before. But now I would like to dive a little bit further into photosynthesis. So plants need sunlight to live. But it seems sort of strange that sunlight can actually be a type of food. Well, sunlight is energy and photosynthesis is the process that the plants use to take this energy from this sunlight and use it to convert carbon dioxide and water into food. So they do this using a compound called chlorophyll. And we talked about this previously, but chlorophyll is green. And that's why most plant leaves are green. So you might think that this means that plants absorb green light and that's why it shows green, but actually the opposite is true. If you were to study how light works, we know that we actually see the color that is being reflected. So chlorophyll actually reflects that green light and absorbs blue and red light. So inside a plant's cell are these structures called chloroplasts. And it's these structures that house the chlorophyll. Now, when talking about photosynthesis, there are two main phases to this process. And in the first phase, the sunlight is captured by the chloroplasts, and then that energy is stored in a chemical called ATP. In the second phase of photosynthesis, ATP is used to create sugar and other organic compounds. And this sugar is what the plant uses to live and to grow. So like I said, the first phase of this process is where the sunlight is captured by the chloroplasts. So for the first phase of this process, the plant must have sunlight. So this must happen during the day. But the second phase where the ATP is used to create sugar can happen even at night. This second phase is called the Calvin cycle because the man who discovered it was named Melvin Calvin. All different types of plants need different amounts of sunlight and even different amounts of water. Some need just a little bit of water while others need a lot of water. And that is the same with sunlight. Some plants like to be in direct sunlight all day long, whereas other plants need some shade. And so it's important to learn how God created each of these plants to understand how to garden food or how to best take care of the plants that you have. Next up on our processes, let's talk about respiration. Respiration may sound familiar because humans do it when we breathe, but plants don't have lungs to be able to inhale and exhale. They can, in their own way, breathe in and out oxygen and carbon dioxide. Plants need these two compounds. They need oxygen 
for aerobic respiration, and this is where food molecules are broken down to release energy for growth. And in this process, it releases carbon dioxide as a waste product. And plants also need carbon dioxide because this is what is used in photosynthesis. So how do these plants draw in and push out these gases if they don't have lungs? Well, they have in their tissues loosely packed cells with large air spaces that allows for the easy exchange and the movement of these gases. Now, it is important to know, gases tend to move from an area of high concentration to an area of low concentration. And this process is called diffusion. So as carbon dioxide is used by cells in the plant for photosynthesis, the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases. And because that happens, the leaf draws in more carbon dioxide from the atmosphere. How do, do these gases cross the leaf barrier? Well, they do so through many tiny pores that are often found on the underside of leaves called stomata. They are found on the bottom side of leaves uh, to protect them from strong sunlight and from dust and other things that could damage them. So like I said, in daylight, plants are both respiring and photosynthesizing. So oxygen and carbon dioxide are diffusing in and out of the leaves during the day. But overnight, when there's no sun, that photosynthesis stops and the stomata close. So during this time, just respiration takes place and only oxygen diffuses into the leaves and only carbon dioxide diffuses out. Next up, let's talk about transpiration and this has to do with water. A plant will lose water throughout the day and this greatly varies from plant to plant and depends a lot about how hot of a day it is, what the humidity is, if it's windy or not, um, and how big the plant is. So when water evaporates from the leaves, this is the main force that pulls the water from the roots up the stem and into the leaves. So this brings with it those minerals and nutrients from the roots to the shoots to the leaves and then the water can move out and evaporate into the atmosphere. This exerts a pull on that water column and that water column is what brings the water up against gravity. So a fully grown tree may actually lose hundreds of gallons of water through its leaves on a hot dry day through this process of transpiration. 90% of the water that enters a plant's roots is used for this process alone, for coming up through the plant, bringing minerals and nutrients with it. The rest or the 10% remaining is typically used in photosynthesis. Desert plants and conifers have adaptations which reduce water loss. And some examples of these adaptations are reduced leaf areas, as in conifers, or thick cuticles and sunken stomata, as in cacti. All of these types of things reduce that transpiration and help to conserve water because if there's not a lot of water available, the plant doesn't want to have it evaporating readily from its leaves. And that's all we have for today. So go ahead and do those worksheets to learn more about photosynthesis, respiration, and transpiration as you go throughout your week. I would also challenge you to look at the plants um, outside and marvel at God's creation and how all of these processes are happening right underneath our nose all the time. Our God is such a great God. And on that note, remember to be kind, follow God's will, and take care. Bye.